Welcome to Pixel Composer tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to go through the new 3D system in Pixel Composer 1.16. And I have said in the feature video, I reworked the entire 3D system. So to make things a little bit more modular. But that also means that the project that contains the older 3D node will not be compatible with the current version. So let's begin. Let's start by creating the 3D object. When you right click and then go to the 3D section, you're going to see all of these new nodes related to the 3D system. The first thing that you want to create is the 3D mesh in this group. So for our example, we're just going to start with some basic cube. Now you can already see some difference is that the output is not a surface, unlike in the previous version, it's a new intermediate 3D object or a mesh. And when you double click on this node, you will see that it will not preview a surface because there's no surface, but it will bring you into a new 3D preview. And in this screen, you can rotate the wheel by using your middle mouse and you can zoom in zoom out with your mouse wheel. Another thing you may notice is that the button on the bottom here is changed. Instead of having, I think like all the different preview options, we now only have the 3D preview setting and the snap setting. But how do you render this cube into an image then? Well, to do that, you need to create a camera. So then right click and then go to 3D. So let's just build a basic camera, right? In this 3D camera node, we have an input of our scene, or in this case, you can just connect the mesh into it. Double click into it, you will see that we have the camera object in the preview scene, but there's no output. That's because the camera is inside of the queue. That's why you cannot see anything. So you can move an object or 3D object using the transform tool in the tool section here. And you can drag the camera out a bit, and now you will be able to see the queue. Now, one thing you might immediately see is that the cube doesn't have any shading, right? When you preview the 3D cube, you're gonna see that there's some light, right? There's some shade going on. But when you preview the 3D camera, there's nothing. That's because the preview scene here comes with some built-in light. So when you click on the 3D preview setting here, you will see that you have this preview light that you can enable or disable, right? You can also like change the color, change the light intensity and stuff like that. But when you preview a 3D camera, you click on the 3D preview setting, it will say that it is now using the camera setting or using the scene as defined in the camera node. So you cannot like, you change this, nothing gonna happen. Right, and there's no light because our scene has no light. So there's like nothing to see, right? The color here is the same as the ambient light that you set in the render option. So instead of using this camera node, we have another node that simplify all the camera and lighting setting called 3D camera set. So you go to 3D, now you can select 3D camera set. And when you previewing the node, you will see that we now have some shading going on. Also, one extra thing is that when you previewing the 3D object, you will have this 3D icon. It's a little bit different from the normal uh, preview, 2D preview icon, right? But it's the same thing. It just means that you are now previewing the 3D object in this node. Right, and the same thing here, there's no output because the camera is inside a mesh, inside a cube. So let's move it back. You can also move it uh, along the plane by selecting on the, the rectangle or the square representing each axis here. You can rotate the camera, right? And now you can see that there are some light because this 3D camera set come with two built-in directional light. And you can see in the inspector, we have this key light and we have a few light that you can control the horizontal angle, vertical angle, set the color intensity. If you only want to use one light, you can just reduce the intensity to zero. Now you will only have one light. And it just make it easier for you to render the video object out with some basic lighting. Now I just move and rotate the camera, right? But the first thing you might think is that it's kind of complicated, right? You have to like move the camera and then rotate the object. And when you look at the rotation here, it's the quaternion rotation, which is just no one want to work with quaternion, especially directly like this. So I have created a different camera positioning mode to make it a little bit easier. So in the camera set or the 3D camera tool, you would have the positioning mode. By default, we set to position plus rotation, which is what we just did, right? We set the position of the camera and then you rotate it. But we can change it to, for example, rotation plus look at, so that you can only have to set the position of the camera and the direction that you want the camera to look at. In this case, the look at is set to the origin point. So when we move the camera, it will always look at that point. Right, so that makes the positioning of the camera a little bit easier already. But there may still be some problem if you want to do like a rotate around kind of scene, right? Controlling this is, is kind of difficult. So I have the third positioning mode called look at plus rotation. 
which allow you to set the location of the, the look at destination and the angle and the distance of the camera, right? Just like how you modify the key light and the field light here with the horizontal vertical angle like this. You can also set your camera using horizontal vertical angles. You can also set the distance from the, the destination as well. And you can also move the look at position using the tool here. You just say move target. Right, you select the move target too, and you can now move where the camera will focus at. And you can also change other property of the camera as well. Like for example, going to the camera groups, you can change the projection. This is perspective, you can change it to orthographic and then zoom it out a little bit. You can set this to, I think, 45, right? We'll go and go 30 to create isometric view. And this is a fundamental of how you do 3D rendering. Of course, there's a lot more into this. Like for example, when you right click and go to the 3D, there's a bunch of other mesh that you can create it. You can import 3D object by dragging the OBJ file from your file explorer into the scene, just like how you do it normally. And then you pack it to the camera. Also, you may notice that each of these new 3D nodes are array processor by default, which means that you can use array to control each of these parameter. Like for example, if I want to export multiple angle objects of the same model, so you can create an array of number by just adding the number node, right? And type in an array, 45 degree, 135 to 215 and 305, right? And then plug it to the horizontal, horizontal angle. Now you will have an array of output, send it to render sprite sheet. Now we will get the sprite sheet of our 3D model. But let's go back to our 3D cube. I think it's wrong. Uh, oh, 225, yeah. Now going back to our cubes, right now it's just a plain white object. If you want to add a texture into our model, you can just send a surface into the material property here. It looks a little bit different, but it can receive normal image just fine. So you can have like a solid color, right? Give it some color. Oh. And now you can color your cube, simple enough. You can also use a palette or you can also have an array of uh, image I am going to give it a palette of color, multiple color, send it to the color property. And now we are making multiple cube of different color, right? And you can even check it in here. Okay. Let's just remove this. <laughs> and now we can render our multiple cube of multiple uh, texture or multiple color, right? And of course you can also use other images as well. Like let me import some images as an image array, right? Let me import some array of image like this array of texture let's pack it into the 3d cube now you will be able to render a object of different texture you can also animate a texture as well you can do it just now and now you can have some trippy 3d animating image another thing with 3d cube here is that you can also set the material per side just like the cube in the 1.15 it will allow you to define a texture for each of the upper surface or each of the face directly now so far we only work with one model, right? So what if you have multiple model and you want to combine it together? Because our camera node here only accept one object. Well, to do that, we have to create a scene, a 3D scene, so type scene. And the scene is simply just a node that can combine multiple 3D objects together to render in a 3D camera. So we can have a different mesh, let's just say sphere, set it to the scene and let's move the object so it's not overlapping each other. Let's just make this cube a ground. Right, and now when you have two model or two object combined into the scene, it's just gonna render together. And with 3D scene, we can now create our own lighting setup. Instead of using the default setup built into the camera set, we can just use the normal 3D camera node instead. And it's better to add light to a camera node that doesn't have the built-in light. To add light, you can just right click and then go to the 3D group just as usual. Go to the light section here, you'll be able to add directional or point light. And in this case, we will go with directional light first. Directional light only use position and it will always point at the origin point. It's a light that comes from infinity, so it doesn't matter where it is. And of course, you can add multiple light as well. You can add more directional light into our scene. Although there's a limit, so you can add maximum of four directional light and four point light in the same scene. You can also make it cast shadow as well. Go to the directional light and then click cast shadow. Now you'll be able to render a shadow. 
and now we have the object, we have the texture, we have the light, we have the scene. So let's play around a little bit with other nodes we have in the 3D section. The first thing you can do is you can use repeat node. So in the 3D option, you will see that there is a 3D repeat node here. Clicking on it, you can now repeat the 3D object. Now, uh, I will just put this out here first is that this is not GPU instancing for you technical people out there. This is just plain CPU loop instancing. So it's not going to be quick. It's not going to be lighting blender level fast. It's going to be slow. So just use it at your discretion. We can set the amount. Right, let's just say 16. But we're not going to see any change because every one of them are in the same position. So you can go to the shift position here and change it. Now we can have 16 of a bunch of cube, like a bunch of sphere, right? Here we're gonna use the custom position property here, which allows you to define a position of each of the instant, each of the copy directly using an array of array. The easiest way to, to deal with this is just to use scatter point. Right? Scatter point by default will give you an array of uh you know back to basically array of XY position, but there is this 3D section here I added that allows you to add in the third axis. But the third axis here just gonna be a constant number, which is fine in this case. They're gonna set the point amount to 16 to match the number of repeat here. And you can just try to connect it to the position properties. The first thing you will notice is that it's all gone. Well, I mean, it's not gone, it just spread around really large, really far away because the 3D unit are a little bit different from the 2D unit, right? The 2D unit is a pixel, but 3D unit is way larger so let's just reduce it right let's just test it basically simply said this sphere have the size of one have scale of one which basically means that this is one pixel so the scatter point here we want it to be really small right in this case a little bit too small also we want it to uh, face the c axis so let's change the normal here to c we can increase the width and height because we have 16, so let's just say 4x4 four four and set it to uniform, maybe 3x3. Three three. And now you have this grid of object. What we can do now, if we can use the new node called point effector, which allows you to influence the point or the position of the object using another 3D effector object. So how this point works is that you give it a set of 3D point, right? you keep it at initial values, the final values, and then you use this effector to control the mixture between the initial and the final values. It might still be a bit confusing, so let's just add in the point, initial value, and final value. Let's do that for now. Then we skip the output to the 3D repeat. You will see that there's nothing changed. So the first thing is that we will modify the final output by sending it to the math node. In this example, I want to move the sphere up in the z-axis. So we want to add each of these vector three values by 0, 0, 001, or in this case, array of 0, 0, 001. And now you will see that this 0, 0, 001 is spread into each of these values. You can say 0 0.820 0 becomes 0 0.821. And then you send this to the final values. And now when you move the effector, you will see now there are some nodes that are moving up. Right? So what's happening here is that a point that inside the effector, inside a small circle here, would have their C position increased by one, right? And the point outside of the effector would use the already initial values from the scatter point, right? And the point of line in between this will interpolate using this for our curve. So in this case, it's just linear, right? We can also increase the for our distance, for all distance to be larger. So that when you move the effector around, you can see that our sphere is now moving in and out smoothly. And the last thing I want to talk here is about UV remapping. So let me just readjust the scene a little bit. We're gonna change from the sphere to cube and give it some gradient texture. Now, what you will see is that each of this cube will become a one single gradient, right? Because that's just how the original cube looks like. But what if you want the gradient to apply to the entire four by four grid of cube? There's a way to do that by using the UV remapper. So you can right click, go to the 3D, and now in the modify here, you, you can add the UV remap node. Connect the scene to the UV remap. And now you can have this controller, which will allow you to remap or reposition your texture. So you can scale it, but let's just say scale it by four. And you can move around. 
you will immediately see that your texture will now be mapped on this square. Wherever you move it, the texture will follow a lot around. And you can also see that the texture will now be remapped across multiple objects. And now you can still modify your cube, right? And that's generally how you work with the new 3D system in Piece of Composer. That's to be the end for this tutorial. So thank you for watching and see you in the next one.